This is one of the best language learning apps I've ever found. It's absolutely free and you don't need to spend even a dime on it. Using this application, whenever you import a book, YouTube video, or any other source, you can assess how challenging the source is based on the percentage and number of unknown words. For example, for me, the ideal situation is to use sources with 5 to 15 percent unknown words. With this app, you can enter the meaning of any word and from then on, you can instantly access the meaning of any word by simply hovering your mouse over it. Another cool thing about this app is that you can add built-in dictionaries for even easier lookups. It also tracks how many words you've learned in your target language, helping you to set goals and track your progress, which is very motivating. For example, my next goal for English is 20,000 words. Using this application, you can have 5 plus 2 statuses for each word. The more you encounter a word in different sources, the more familiar it becomes. So we can update its status until it is finally recognized as a known word. It has many other features such as exporting words, importing audio, for example, audiobooks, and a lot more, which I'm going to talk about in this video. So let's start. And now let's talk about how to use the Loot application and how to use different features of the Loot application. But I'm sure that there are some people who would ask, oh, how can we install the Loot application? How can we set up our own language? For example, suppose that you want to learn English and you may ask, how can I set up English in this Loot application? So actually I have a separate video about how to install the Loot application and how to set up your own language. If you want to learn about those stuff, you can find the link to that video in the description below. But in this video, we are going to talk about how to use the Loot application and how to use different features of the Loot application. So the first thing that we want to talk about is how to add different sources to the Loot application. So in order to do so, we should go to books and create new book. And here you should specify a title. For example, let's call it sample text and here is the text which i want to add that's it and i will talk about all of these stuff later on but now i want to talk about the audio file suppose that you want to add a audio file an audio file for uh, this text in order to do so you click on this choose a file and for example suppose that this is the file which i want to add so i click on it and i press open so actually i have added this audio file as well and i press save and once again i should mention that i will talk about the other fields such as text file words per count and these kinds of things later on in this video so please wait anyway i click on the save button so first of all let's make our reading area a little bit bigger that's it so this is a text which we have added and every text consists of different words and the, here is the first question maybe you ask oh what is the meaning of these blue colors so the blue color means you haven't specified the status of the word what do i mean for example suppose that when i'm reading this i know the meaning of my name is so in that case i will hover my mouse over this word and i press w on my keyboard w means well known so actually i have changed the status of this word to known to well known and from now on whenever i encounter this word no matter in what sources the color of this word is going to be transparent i mean it is not going to have any color because it's a well-known word and for example i know the word name as well so i hover my mouse over this word and i press w on my keyboard so now it's a well-known word as well so let's do the same thing for other words but here we have some proper nouns for example sajjad which is my first name and loot which is the name of this application or link which is the name of another language learning application which is not free and actually loot is the free version of the link application anyway by the way i should mention that link has some other features as well but you know to be you know roughly speaking i think loot is a kind of free version of the link application anyway so as you can see there are some proper nouns and uh, we don't want to make them as known maybe you want but i don't want to do so so i want to ignore these words because they are proper nouns so in that case i would hover my mouse over this word and i press i on my keyboard which means ignore so as you can see the color of this word would be gray at least in the theme which i'm using it is going to be gray 
and once again i do the same thing i hover my mouse over this word and i press i it means ignore it is going to ignore this word and also i would hover my mouse over this word and i press i and it's going to make it ignore the word and now i'm sure that there are some people who may ask a question they may ask is there a way to change the keyboard shortcuts for these things for example maybe they ask can we change the shortcuts of known words to k and for example the shortcut for ignoring the words to x can we do so the answer is yes you can do so and i have a tutorial about that thing as well which i'll put the link in the description below but now let's talk about the audio player of the loot application which in my opinion is a very very cool thing and i really need to thank the developer of the loot application because of this cool audio player because it has a lot of advanced features anyway so as you can see here we have a kind of button which if you click on it it is going to uh, you know, change the position of this audio player. And if you click on it again, it is going to change the position of the audio player. And if you click on this, you can play the audio. My name is Sajjad. English is not my native language. My native language is Persian. That's it. You can pause the video, pause the audio as well. And now maybe you want to skip forward or skip backward. So for example, maybe you want to skip forward for five seconds. So you click on this. If you want to skip backward for five seconds, you can click on this. And also you can change the time as well. For example, maybe you, maybe you, you want to use a three seconds. So skip forward three seconds, skip uh, forward, skip backward three seconds and so on. And also you can change the rate. I mean, the speed. So let's change the speed and let's uh, play the audio. I've created this sample text to showcase some features of the loose application. So now let's talk about the best feature of this audio player, which is this bookmark button. For example, suppose that this is a book and this is an audio book. And for example, suppose that here is the chapter one. So in that case, I would click on this bookmark button. So this is a bookmark. And for example, suppose that here is chapter two, here is chapter three and so on. And another use case for this bookmark button is this, that for example, suppose that I'm reading this text and I'm listening to the audio file of this text. And for example, today I'm listening to this audio file and I have continued all the way up to this point. So I can bookmark this point and tomorrow I can continue from this bookmark. But maybe you ask, how can we delete these bookmarks? It's very simple. For example, suppose that your player is here and uh, you should click on uh, these buttons. For example, if you click on this, you're going to actually navigate between different bookmarks. So when you're at this bookmark, you can click on it again. So it is going to, I don't know how to say it, unbookmark or remove this from bookmark. I don't know how to say it in English. Anyway, uh, you should click on this and click on this in order to unbookmark or remove the bookmark, whatever. So you should click on this and this and that's it. And it's very obvious that this kind of a slider is for changing the volume. So that's it. But now let's click on this button in order to go to the home of this application. So that's it. You're waiting. Yeah, that's it. So as you can see, here's our sample text. And if I hover my mouse over this progress bar and it says the percentage of the well-known or ignored words in this sample text is 100%. And it says that the number of unique words in this sample text, which are well known or ignored, is 36. And now, suppose that I want to archive this sample text. In order to do so, I should hover my I should hover my mouse over this three dots, and I should click on this archive. And it says, "Are you sure about it?" Yes, I want to archive this. So I press OK, and you can see that that sample text has been archived. And maybe you ask, "Oh." how can i find that archived source in order to do so you should go to books you should hover your mouse over this term i mean books and then you should click on this one book archive and if you click on it you can see that that sample text is in this archived section and if you want to unarchive that sample text it's very easy you should hover your mouse here and click on on archive that's it so now let's talk about how to add youtube videos for our loot application so here is uh, the link of a youtube video which happens to be my own video and i know that there are some websites or extensions especially some extensions which you can find on chrome uh, web store and they allow you they help you 
to download the closed caption, I mean the subtitle of YouTube videos. I don't know whether it's legal or illegal, but as far as I can see, they have uploaded those stuff on Chrome Web Store. But anyway, this was a disclaimer, so I don't know whether it's legal or illegal. This is a video of mine, and I have the subtitle of this video which is my own video so anyway so i have a uh, file of my own video you can see this is srt so there are two approaches which you can use uh, this srt file let's talk about the first approach the first approach is going to books create new book and here you should choose as you can see it says text files and these are the formats which are allowed in this application so you should click and, and as you can see srt is one of them so you should click on this one which says choose file and you should choose this file and press open and as you can see it automatically uses the name of the file as the title of this source but anyway this is my suggestion for all of the things which you're going to add from now on this is my suggestion because later on you are going to add at least hundreds of sources and in order to find different sources it's better to have a kind of rule for your naming process this is the rule which i myself use if it's if it's a youtube video i will uh, use a prefix such as ytb means youtube and then i would uh, type the channel name the channel name of that video and after that i will put the name of that uh, source i mean that video this is the title of the video so youtube channel name and the title if it is a book so in that case i would type book and then the name of the book the name of the book and after that author or authors and this is a uh, format which i use for books and if it is a movie so in that case because as you can see you can have the subtitle of a movie as well so this is going to be movie and then i'll put the name of that movie and if it was a website i mean a web page such as blog and these kinds of things in that case i would use this format web and also the website name if it was famous if it was not famous no i'm not going to use the website name and i'm going to use web dash and the title of that web page but if it was from, for example, the website of James Clear, which is a famous person. So in that case, I would type web James Clear, for example, the title of that web page. Anyway, but in this case, it's a YouTube video. So I'm going to use this format, YouTube. And then I'm going to here, I'm going to type channel name, whatever that channel name is. That's it. And in this case, you must not add anything inside this box. And if you do so, I mean, if you add anything inside this box in this example, you are going to encounter with error. Why? Because actually you're importing something. When you're importing something, you must not add anything inside this box. And the second one is words per page, which I usually put it 250, which is a default value. And usually the books have 200 all the way up to 300 words per page. So the average is 250 that's why we want to have about 250 words per page this is the text source for example in this case i want to have the the link of the youtube video as and i want to put it in the text uh, source field that's it i've talked about the audio file field before and for tags for example here i can add a youtube tag i myself don't do so i you don't i don't usually use tags but if you want you can do so so here we can add for example ytb for the tags uh for the tag of this source and i press save so as you can see we have imported this uh source as well and there is a uh, kind of cool thing about this kind of importing. And that thing is, for example, if you open this file using a notepad, you can see it is an SRT file. And because of that, it has timestamps. But when you import that source using the method which I have explained, in that case, it is going to ignore all of those timestamps. But maybe you ask, oh, I don't want to skip those timestamps. I want, I want to have those timestamps. How should I do so? So in order to do so, let's talk about the second approach. And for doing so, first of all, let's delete uh, this thing we have just added. So let's delete this one. And let's go to books, create new books, create new book. 
And here, once again, I type this same thing, YouTube, and this is the channel name. And then we should add the title of that, which is this one. So this is the title of, uh, the, of that video. And also, I want to copy and paste the title of, I mean, the title, I mean, the name of this source and the first line of this source of the text as well, because there might be some new words in the title as well well but unfortunately using the first method you cannot do so so that's why my favorite method is method number two so the second method is opening uh, that srt file using a notepad and cup and uh, selecting all of those stuff and copying it and pasting it inside this text box that's it and let's add uh, the source as well so this is the source and i press save and one of the benefits of using this second method is that you can have these uh, timestamps, which in my opinion is a very useful thing because for example, you can see that in this specific time of the video, these things have been set, which in my opinion is useful. And you can navigate and you can go to that specific part of that video using these timestamps. And by the way, I'm sure that there are some people who may ask this question. They may ask, is there a way to change the font face of all of these stuff? Yes, you can change the font face of all of these stuff as well. I have a separate video about that topic as well, which I will put the link in the description below. So, so far we have covered some stuff. For example, if you want to ignore this word, you should hover your mouse over it and press I, and let's do the same thing for this one. But now suppose that someone doesn't know the meaning of genius. So in that case, that person should click on this word. And as soon as you click on this word, a side panel will appear which you can do some stuff, which I'm going to talk about it later on in this video. But in the bottom of this side panel, you can see some dictionaries, which we have added. And maybe you ask where we have added these dictionaries. How can we add these dictionaries? And as I've told you, I have a separate video about how to install loot and how to set up loot and how to add uh, dictionaries and these kinds of things. I've talked about this topic in that installation video. So you can watch that video and the link to that video is in the description it is in the description below anyway so we have added some dictionaries and now we can uh, see the meaning of that word using these dictionaries for example this is one of them which i can see the meaning of that word and this is the cambridge dictionary which is a pop-up window dictionary which if i click on it it is going to show that in a separate window and we have talked about these pop-up and embedded kinds of things in that video which i've mentioned before so you can learn more about it in that video so longman is another pop-up window dictionary that's it and here is another question how can we close this side panel in order to close this side panel you should press the escape key on your keyboard that's it you can see we have escaped this side panel but now let's talk about how to translate a sentence and by the way, before that, I should mention that you should have added a dictionary, a website in order to use for translation. For example, when I was adding dictionaries in that specific video, which I mentioned before, when I was doing so, I added Google Translate for, translate, for translating the sentences. And now suppose that I want to translate this sentence. In order to do so, I should hover my mouse over one of the words in this sentence. It doesn't really matter. You should hover your mouse over one of the words in this sentence. For example, this one, this one, or whatever. So, for example, I hover my mouse over this word, and I press T, which means translate. And if I press T on my keyboard, you can see it is going to translate that sentence. And now let's close this. But I'm sure that some people may encounter with a problem. And that problem is this, that for example, they are clicking on, for example, this word, I mean, genius. And actually this word is selected, but they hovered a mouse over, for example, this word, and they expect the, the loot application to translate this sentence. But actually, when you hover your mouse over this word and you press T, it is not going to do so because this word, I mean, the genius is selected. It is going to translate that sentence, which is this one. And by the way, this translation is a very, very terrible translation in Persian. My native language is Persian, but this translation is really terrible. It's absolutely wrong. Anyway, let's close this. And also let's press the escape key on the keyboard in order to escape and in order to get rid of this side panel. And now let's talk about different status for a word. 
which we can choose based on how familiar we are with that word. So for example, if I click on this, you can see here we have a kind of a spectrum from one all the way up to five. And maybe you ask, oh, why suddenly from yellow all the way up to light yellow and suddenly we have a red color. Why is it like this? Actually, as I've told you before, this is a theme which I myself have coded for myself. And I, I myself have make this specific one. I mean, the state is five as red and I have a reason for that. But if I want to explain that, it's a kind of thing which I use for my language learning process. It's a kind of a strategy which I use. But if I want to talk about that as strategy, it is going to make this video longer and longer and longer. So let's skip that. But anyway, I will put a video in the description below, which I will talk about how you can change the color of each of these cells. So actually you have three options. Number one, to choose other themes in the loot application, which there are a lot of other themes which you can use. This is option number one. Option number two is using this theme and use these colors, but maybe you don't know what is the meaning of this red one. Maybe I'll, I will talk about that in another future video, but also we can use one all the way to four. It's a lot, you know, four status for word is I think enough. And also the third thing that you can do is watch that other video, which I'll put the link in the description below and you can change the color of this fifth cell and you can modify it and customize it as you wish. Anyway, let's change the status of this word, I mean genius, to one. So I click on one and I press save. So as you can see, the status of this word has been updated. And if I want to change it to two, so I should click on it and change it to two and press save. That's it. But maybe you ask this question, maybe you ask, oh, is there a way to do all of these stuff using shortcuts? Yes, of course. For example, if you hover your mouse over this word and if you press one on your keyboard, it is going to change the status to one. If you press two, it is going to change the status to two. If you press three, it is going to change the status to three, four. If you press four, it is going to change the status to four. If you press five, it is going to change the status to five and so on. So I pressed one in order to change the status to one. And also let's mention something which in my opinion is very important. Uh, as you, this is my own keyboard and as you know, some keyboards have this part, but some keyboards don't have. So in Persian, we call this specific part of the keyboard as calculator keyboard because it's like a calculator, but I don't know how to say it in English. If you uh, know how to say it in English, please let me know. I want to know that as well. But anyway, in Persian, we call this a specific part of the keyboard calculator keyboard. And as you can see here, we have one, two, three, and these numbers. And also we have one, two, three, and so on in this part of the keyboard as well. By the time of recording, at least in this version of the loot, if you use these numbers, which are located on the calculator uh, keyboard part of your keyboard, it is not going to work. So you need to use the numbers from this part of your keyboard, not this part. But now let's suppose that we want to label this word. I mean, learned. As you know, this word has different forms. For example, one of them is learn. The other one is learns. The other one is learning. And also learned and also learned and also learner, learners and so on. So there are some forms that may pop into your mind when you are reading this text and when you are encountering this word. Or for example, this tracker. As you know, tracker, the other forms of tracker is trackers and also, so the first one is the tracker itself, trackers, and also the word. I mean, track, tracks, tracking, and tracked. So now when I'm labeling these words, yeah, I know the meaning of learned. So I hover my mouse over it and I press W in order to make it well known. And also I do the same thing for tracker. I hover my mouse over it and I press W in order to make it well known. But here's the thing, as you know, or maybe you don't know, but in the loot application, it is going to consider each form of the verb, each form of the word, 
a separate word. For example, it is going to consider each of these things as different words. This is one word, this is another word, this is another word, this is another word, and so on. So it is going to consider each of these forums as separate words. So with that being said, this is my suggestion. My suggestion is this. For example, suppose that you are spending 30 minutes or one hour or whatever for your language learning process. And in that time, you are, for example, reading this text. My suggestion is this. When you are, for example, encountering the word learned and you are labeling the word learned, try to open a notepad, try to open a notepad and at the other forms of this word, which you are labeling now, so try to add other forms of that thing, of that word, and that notepad. And for example, when you're labeling the word tracker, try to add the other forms of that word, which you know. Yeah, there might be some other forms of the word which you don't know, but there might be some other forms of the verb which you do know. So in that case, you should add those other forms of that word which you do know and try to add them to that notepad. Maybe you ask why, I will talk about it, wait a minute. And after your reading session, not in the middle of it, you don't need to ruin your study session, no. You can do it after your reading or studying session. After your studying session, after you, after you have labeled and if, after you have read this text or whatever, anyway, after that, you go to home of the Loot application, you go to books, create new book, and here you want to create another source. I myself always name this temp, always, almost always, not almost, exactly always, literally always, I name it temp. And I copy all of these stuff and I paste them here. And then I press save. And now I'm going to label these words as well. So I have labeled learned as well known, and I'm going to do the same thing for the other forms. So I hover my mouse over this word and I press W and, just, and do the same thing for other ones and do the same thing for the other forms of tracker. And if you don't do this, you should wait for the other forms of the word to show up in other sources naturally which in my opinion, it is not very efficient. If you like, you can do so, but I don't like it. I want to do this thing because it is more efficient. And also, as your English level increases, sometimes you encounter with some uncommon words. Even for seeing one uncommon word, you need to read a lot of sources to see one form of that uncommon word, let alone all forms of that uncommon word. So that's why, I myself prefer this strategy, but if you don't like it, there is no problem. You can wait for the other forms of the word to show up naturally. But I myself like this approach and I myself have used this approach because in my opinion, it's more efficient. And after doing this, I want to archive this source because I don't need it. So I click on this in order to archive that source. But now let's talk about a very cool thing called parents. But what do I mean by that? So in order to explain that, let me create a new book and let me paste a couple of words, not a couple of, a handful of books. And then I, once again, I want to name it temp and let's press save. So now let's click on this word, I mean gun. And as you can see, it has a field called parents. And here, let's suppose that I want to choose go as the parent of gun. And for doing so, you need to press the comma key on your keyboard. And after that, you can see now it's as a parent, it's a separate word. So the parent of uh, gun is go. And for example, suppose that I want to assign this color for gun. I mean, this two, I mean, color, color number two, uh, the status number two, which has color number two. And, I, and let's press save. And the cool thing about this is that parents and children are interconnected with each other. I mean, they inherit from each other. For example, I have specified the status of the word gone, not the word go. But because go was the parent of the word gone, so it has inherited the status of gone, which is a cool thing. And let's do the same thing for goes. So I want to say, okay, the parent of goes is go, and I press the comma key on my keyboard, 
And after that, I press save. And as you can see, it inherits the status of the word go because the parent is go. And if I hover my mouse over each of these files, for example, each of these words, for example, if I hover my, my mouse over this word gone, you can see in parentheses, it says that the parent of this word is go. And let's and also if I hover my mouse over this word, it says the parent of this word is go. And let's do the same thing for these two words as well. But now let's talk about another cool thing about parents. And in order to do so, let's go to my note-taking app, which is called Obsidian, and I use it for my flashcards as well. And let's copy this, this word. And I will talk about this uh, thing, I mean this Obsidian note-taking app and these kinds of things a little bit later, wait a minute. But anyway, so I copy that and I go to the Loot application and I click on this word. And as you can see, it has a section called translation. So it has a field called translation and I paste that stuff in this field. And I want to set its status as one. So I click on it and I press save. So as you can see, the status of this word is one. And if I hover my mouse over this word, you can see this is the meaning of this word. And it's a very cool thing because from now on, whenever I'm going to encounter with this word in any source, I'm going to see this translation, which is a very good thing, but it is going to be even more cool. For example, if I click on this word and if I add the word bear as the parent of the word burrs, so this is that word, I click on it, or instead of clicking, I can simply type that and I can uh, press the, the uh, comma key on my keyboard. And you can see it has been added as the parent of this word and I press save. And as you can see, it is going to inherit the status. Not only it is going to inherit the status of this word, but also it is going to inherit the translation. I mean, those explanations which you have added in the translation field. And let's do the same thing for other forms. And by the way, I don't need to constantly press the save button. I can simply press control enter on my keyboard in order to, instead of clicking on the save button. And also it's very obvious that if I update the status of one word, it is going to update the status of its other forms as well. For example, if I hover my mouse over this word, I mean gone, and if I press W in order to make it known as known word, it is going to make other words other forms as known word as well. So we don't need this file, this source anymore. So let's archive this source as well. So now let's talk about another cool feature of this application, which you can find out how many words have you added into this application. In order to do so, you should go to terms and terms. And here, if you scroll down, you can see so far we have added 57 entries. And remember that this number doesn't include the number of ignored words. So maybe you ask, how can I include ignored words as well? In order to do so, you should scroll up and here you should click on filters and you should check this one, which says include ignored. And now if you scroll down, you can see now the number of words, I mean the total words, including the ignored words is 62. And another cool thing which you can do is exporting all of this data. In order to do so, you should scroll up and here you should hover your mouse over this, I mean actions, and here you should click on export CSV. And as you can see, it has exported all of this stuff into this terms.csv file. So now if I open this file, you can see in this file, we have different columns. The first one is term, which is a word. The second one is parents. The other one is translation. The other one is language. The other one is tags. The other one is added, which is a date and time, which I have added that a specific word and the other one is a status i means ignore w means well known and so on and link status means that for example as you can see for this bearing for this word bearing it says yes it means that this word has a parent and because it has a parent its status is connected to another word and so yes the status of this word is linked to another word that's it and also this column is a pronunciation column 
if you add anything in the pronunciation field, what do I mean by pronunciation field? For example, if I click on this word, as you can see, we have a field called pronunciation. And if you add anything here, that thing is going to show up in this pronunciation column. And now suppose that for whatever reason, I have lost the data in the loot application. And the only thing that I have is for example this terms.csv file by the way i really suggest you to make backups i myself do it every day because if you lose your data and if you don't have any backup so in that case you should start from scratch which is very annoying so i really suggest you to make backups anyway let's suppose that i want to import this data which is my own data and i want to import it into that loot application in order to do so in the loot application i hover my mouse over this and i go to import terms and here i click on this which says choose a file and here i choose this file and i press open so in this case it's very obvious that i want to create new terms because inside this csv file i have about 19,000 terms so it's very obvious i want to create a lot of new terms and also i want to update existing terms but i don't want to set new terms to unknown no of course i don't want to do so so i'm not going to check this one but i'm definitely going to check this one and this one that's it and i press import that's it as you can see i've imported this uh, csv file and by the way i should mention that the amount of time that you need to wait for this import process depends on the file size of your csv file for example for me i think i didn't measure the time but i think it took about one to two minutes i guess anyway so as you can see i've included the ignored words and now if i scroll down you can see so far i have added uh these number of words into the loot application and for me this number i mean including ignored words is very motivating very very motivating you know after installing the loot application the amount of time that i spend for learning english has increased a lot because of this number maybe <laughs> it sounds stupid but uh, actually this is my goal to increase this number for example my my next milestone is 20,000 words and the next milestone would be 25,000 words and so on and I and this number is very very motivating for me at least for me it's very motivating I don't know whether it's it's stupid or not but anyway I really love to increase this number and I really owe to this application because of this gamification for me it's very motivating to increase this number and I find it very very useful in my opinion, the biggest cool thing about this application is that it can track, it can set goal based on this number. But now let's talk about one of the best features of this application, which unfortunately, there are some problems with that feature and we need to fix that because if you don't fix that, those statistics will be wrong. But if we fix that, that's going to be, in my opinion, the best feature of this application. This is one of the best things about this application. And that thing is, if I hover my mouse over this progress bar, you can see that it says the number of unknown words is 24 words in this source, and the percentage is 6%. But unfortunately, these statistics are wrong. If the source has more than five pages, for example, if I open this source, you can see that it has 31 pages. And if your source has more than five pages, those statistics are wrong. And we need to fix that. And I'm going to teach you how to fix that as well. And let me explain why they have did so. I mean, the developers of the Loot application did so. The reason they have did so was this, that they wanted the loot application to be fast. For example, if a source like this has more than five pages, for example, this source has 31 pages. So in that case, the loot application is going to sample only five pages of that source. And based on uh, that five pages, it is going to calculate all of those statistics and it is going to generalize that to the whole source which is not a good thing in my opinion and i should mention that i understand they have did so because they wanted the application to be fast but actually on the other side it is going to make all of these statistics useless suppose that you import a, a, a for example book with 200 pages 300 pages or these kinds of things so in that case all of those statistics will be wrong which is not a good thing in my opinion 
Anyway, so I want to fix that problem and I'm going to show you how to fix uh, that problem. But it's very obvious that if we want to go through all the book, not only five pages of the book, it is going to take a little bit longer. So in order to get a better sense, for example, I myself, when I add a source with about, for example, 200 pages, in that case, it is going to take about 10 seconds or even less. So in my opinion, waiting for 10 seconds and on the other side, having accurate statistics is far better than making the application fast, but actually ruining all of these statistics and actually making all of them wrong. So that's why I want to change some stuff in this application so that it is going to give us accurate statistics. And I'm going to talk about how to do so and how to fix this problem in the third video of this playlist. Because actually before that, I cannot talk about it. There are some prerequisites before that video. So that's why I said I'm going to talk about that thing in the third video of this playlist. And you can find a link to that playlist in the description below. Now I have paused the video and changed that thing in the application. And now if I hover my mouse over this, you can see it shows me the correct and accurate statistics, which in my opinion is more useful. And also I myself use this format. Actually, I don't use the tags uh, column. So that's why I changed the code of the application to get something like this because I want to see the number of unknown words and the percentage of unknown words and I can sort based on that and it's a very good thing. And as I've told you, in my opinion, one of the best feature of this application is this, that you can see which sources are challenging, which sources are, are easy, which sources are hard and these kinds of things. In my opinion, this is the best feature of this application. That's why I wanted to add this column for myself. And I will record another video for how to do so as well. And I'm going to add that video to this loot application playlist as well. Anyway, back to the topic. But for me, this unknown percentage is very, very useful. For example, this is my preference. The ideal situation for me is reading some sources, which they have 5% all the way up to 10% unknown words. And if that percentage is 10% all the way up to 15%, it is acceptable. If it is 15% all the way up to 20%, it is challenging. And if it is above 20%, I myself don't like using it for language learning. Maybe I read it for other purposes, but for language learning, no, I don't want to use that for language learning purposes. But there are some other people, for example, like Mr. Steve Kaufman, who says that he likes to read sources, which they have 15 all the way up to 20% unknown words. So as you can see, every person has different preferences. Also, let me tell you one thing, which is very important. And in order to showcase the thing, which I'm going to tell you, I went to this terms page and I have deleted some of them, not some of them, a lot of them, I think a couple of thousands of them. So, and now I want to update the status of each of these files. In order to do so, I should, I have two options. Number one is opening each of these sources. For example, look at this, as you can see, for example, look at this source. If I hover my mouse over it, you can see it says that 100% of this source is well known or ignored. But if I open it and if I click on this again, I mean, go back to home, you can see the status of this source has been updated. And also there is another way as well. And that is clicking on this refresh button. So if I click on it, you can see it has updated all of those sources. And now let's talk about another cool feature of this application. And that is, for example, suppose that I want to copy the sentence of this word, not the word itself. I want to copy the sentence containing this word. Maybe you ask why. For example, I want to copy the sentence because I want to add it to my flashcard. In my flashcard, I want to add some examples. And because of that, I want to copy the sentence containing this word. In order to do so, there are two ways you can do so. Number one is to hover your mouse over this word. And after that, press C on your keyboard. So as you can see, it is going to copy that sentence. And the other way 
is clicking on the word. So the first way was to hover your mouse over that word, and the second one is actually clicking on that word. And after clicking, you can press C on your keyboard. That's it, let's press escape to close this right side panel. And also, if you want to copy the whole paragraph containing this word, so in that case, once again, you have two ways. You can hover your mouse over that word, or click on that word. So for example, I want to hover my mouse over this word. And instead of pressing C on your keyboard, you should press Shift C on your keyboard. And as you can see, it is going to copy the whole paragraph. That's it. But now, for example, let's copy the sentence containing this word, and I want to show you something. So now, after that, if I go to another thing, for example, another application, this is the Obsidian application, which I use for my note-taking process. And if I paste that, you can see, unfortunately, it is not going to paste that in a beautiful manner. And also, let me paste that in another thing, another application so that you can see the real problem. Now, if I paste that, you can see, unfortunately, we have some weird characters between these words. And at the time of recording, at least at the time of recording, I mean, at least in this current version of the Loot application, which I'm using, this is a kind of bug which I'm facing, and it is pasting these stuff, and it's, and it's copying and pasting these stuff in a wrong manner. So I have another video about how to fix this problem as well. And I have included that uh, video in this step-by-step -step loot application uh, playlist. And after fixing the problem using that video, which as I've told you, I've added uh, that video into the loot application playlist. And I have put the link to that playlist in the description below. Anyway, so after using the thing I mentioned in that video. Now, if I copy this sentence, and for example, if I go to this app and I uh, press Control V in order to paste that, and also if I paste that text here, you can see now we don't have any problem. And actually, we have fixed that problem in that video. And also in that video, I have mentioned another thing as well. For example, I have taught you how to add another shortcut. For example, I myself want to add another shortcut, which is V. And for example, as soon as I press the V button on my keyboard, I want to copy the word itself, not the sentence, not the paragraph. I want to copy the word itself. For example, if I hover my mouse over this word and if I press V on my keyboard, you can see the word itself has been copied. Anyway, you can find all of those stuff in the Loot application step-by-step -step tutorial playlist, which I'll put the link to that playlist in the description below. All of the stuff, I mean, from how to install the Loot application, how to set up the Loot application, and all of the other things I have covered are there and you can watch them in a step-by-step -step manner. And that's it.